Welcome to the Ask Faleschini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Karen Coger from New Jersey. Karen is the principal and founder of Coger Law Forum, a virtual legal counsel service that specializes in enter uh, uh, representing entrepreneurs, businesses, creatives, e-commerce, and Amazon sellers in trademark and copyright registration, enforcement, and defense. Karen, please tell us more about yourself. What is your story? My story. Um, well, my story starts off with a young girl that was very much interested in media. Um, anything from TV, radio, newspapers. And uh, I, I, at first, I wanted to pursue a career in media. That was my major in law school. But somehow, not law school, that was my major in undergrad, but I ended up in law school. So after practicing as a litigator, um, I was one of those attorneys that you see on TV that goes to court. I was burnt out. And I said, you know what, let me go back to what I love, but in a different capacity. Um, because I have this, this legal knowledge, I want to help other people who are entrenched in media. Um, and now it's more so creatives um, that I work with, but I wanted to go back and help them in a way that the average person wouldn't do, if that makes any sense. Yes. What would you say that an average entrepreneur that did not finish uh, law school misses about trademark registration, about infringement? W what is the main lack of knowledge that you experience while uh, discussing them or uh, helping them uh, taking care of things? The number one big mistake is putting trademarks off to the end of their process. So when people start businesses, I say, you know, they go to the state, they register with the state, they buy all the domain names, um, they, they get all their social media handles, they invest in marketing, they, you know, they do all of the things and they know in the back of their head, well, I should, you know, register the trademark or I should, you know, file, file copyrights, but I'll do that later. And then what happens is somebody else comes along with the same exact logo or something that's very similar and they register first. Um, they are awarded the registration and now essentially they can come after you. They can send you a cease and desist. And now you spent all this money building a brand and now you might be in a position that you have to rebrand because you never protected your business. So I tell people, um, when you're starting your business, you need to explore trademarks first, just as, as soon as you get the idea in your head that you want to start a business. I would like to ask you about the pricing. I know it's not the most grateful thing about it, but um, is trademark registration attainable to an average entrepreneur starting a business? How much would you, like the, the, the lowest price to register uh, a trademark in U.S.? How much would that cost? All right. The lowest price to register a trademark in the United States is $250. That is registering one trademark in one class. And that's just paying the registration fee on the USPTO website. And how much uh, would your assistant cost, for example, uh, Usually, I, I would say like 10 to 20 hours of, of your consulting uh, work. How, how much would, would that cost? So what, what is that um, in, a, in a region? Not, not, it's, it's not necessarily that you give a uh, um, precise number. You can give a rough estimate. So um, my pricing starts at $3,000. So mm -hmm. you see there's a very big difference between 250 which is just filing your application, and working with an attorney. And what a lot of people don't realize is that most of the trademark process really starts in the beginning with that research, um, seeing what else is out there. Is your potential mark you know, similar to somebody else's? Um, is there a company that you might not think they're thinking about you, but they're very litigious? So with my research, I would be able to, to figure that out. So for instance, I had a client and her brand um, was Entrepreneur. Uh, it was Entrepreneur. She wrote a book. She had a logo. 
Um, she filed the trademark on her own. She got down to the opposition period. So at the end of the trademark process, they do what's called publishing for mm-hmm. opposition, where somebody else can step up and say, hey, I don't think they should get that mark because it's so close to mine. She was contacted by Entrepreneur Magazine. So with her research, she's like, this isn't similar to Entrepreneur Magazine. It doesn't say entrepreneur. You know, I changed the letters. I, you know, it's something completely different. But Entrepreneur Magazine, they they work very hard at protecting that brand. And in that type of research that we do in the beginning, if she would have come to me at the beginning, I would have let her know, listen, there's a litigious company out here. If you go for it with this mark, I can almost guarantee that they are going to see you. <laughs> yeah, but let's be realistic. Uh, for example, $3,500 with all the fees, it's still, that's that's an iMac. That's not a lot of money. You, you have mm-hmm. to think of that. That is important. It, it's it's right. It's one notebook worth of money, and yeah. it, it can bring so much uh, to your company, or you can lose so much in the process. Because if you already printed all the flyers, if you printed the books, everything, you might okay. lose a lot more money. So I, I would say that this is one of the, the, the first investment the company needs to make. And it's also a tax uh, write-off, and it stays in, it it's, it's uh, intangible asset in 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 your um, balance sheet so it's not wasted money you still have that in, uh, on your sheet is is not a direct uh, cost it's, it's it's investment so i would say that is uh, extremely important and i also agree that uh, they should start in the beginning and mm-hmm. uh, know what are their odds and you also mentioned that um, it's important to have the process right so first register your trademark then go and register all the uh, social media handles and all this stuff. That that I, I do believe that is the key to take yes. uh, away when you're going into uh, debt. Um, yes, absolutely. Because um, when you said register the social media handles, you know, um, again, working with an attorney, they will tell you, you know, this is the category or class in which you're filing your trademark and it it's protected right here in this one category and class. And sometimes people will think, well, I have a website, you know, doesn't, doesn't that protect me or, and, and it doesn't, and you might have to go and register your website. Um, and this day of social media, um, hashtags are, are, are a big deal. So if you wanted to protect the hashtag of your podcast, you would have to trademark the hashtag and then the rest of the name of your podcast. So it's all of these other assets that the average person isn't thinking, I need to follow registrations for those. Um, Clothing lines, let's, you know, people in America, they love t-shirt lines with amazing designs on them. And people pump out these designs day after day and they don't, they do not register either if it's for their logo Um, They don't register that, but if it's the graphic, they don't file for copyright protection and Mm -hmm. he steals their, their, their t-shirt. Yeah, that is amazing. Especially because um, Amazon is offering uh, this service. So you just have to make a nice graphic and then uh, they will, they will uh, do the, all the, I I believe the the whole fulfillment is, is done for you uh, by Amazon. So yes. Your only asset is the idea or the graphic that you you, you came out with. So uh, it's paramount to to register that and 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 to protect your uh, property. So intellectual property in 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 that case. Um, yes. So how important is to get a lawyer on board? or uh, attorney when you're dealing with, or when your core business is basically based on intellectual property, how important is to get the right consultant on board? It's extremely important because again, uh, you want to clear just the name of your business and the logo of your business first. But as you start producing assets, um, let's say you are a business coach and you're putting out you know, workbooks and, um, and videos and webinars and podcast episodes, all of these things need to be registered. So 
it's important to have an attorney because what I find is that most people don't know what assets do I have that need to be registered. Mm -hmm. So um, I would also like to ask you another question. Uh, we were talking about uh, t-shirts now, but there is also a lot of electronics that is offered as original equipment manufacturing, so or white labels, I, I believe it's called. And mm -hmm. if you have your own label, you can put it on anything. How important it is to protect this label, this logo, and this uh, trade? Uh, extremely important. So we mentioned selling on Amazon. Um, oftentimes, there are people when you go on Amazon, um, there might be a hundred people selling the same product, but they have white labeled it, as you said. You know, they they are able to put their logo on there. But what they want to do is they want to separate themselves out from the competitor. So. Um, something you know if the product is um if it's inclusive in my brand in my branding in my business i definitely want to have that you know white label and not just have it out there as a generic product like everybody else's so it adds value and um Sorry. trademark adds value and trademark also stands for um different um uh, different things uh one is also uh, customer service so uh the the same the same uh, company or sorry the same product that is sold under a different brand might have a completely different uh customer service so if exactly. your customer service is really good or is excelling uh it's paramount that you also have your label or uh, brand registered yes how long does it take to register a brand so right now it's taking about 12 to 18 months um, to go through the process. Uh, during the pandemic, a lot of people became entrepreneurs and opened their own businesses. So the trademark office said that the, the number of applications that you know were submitted rose. Um, so right now, when you submit an application to the trademark office, they might not even get to it for six months. Okay. Um well, I know that if you are in a hurry, that then you can, for a patent, I don't know how it's with the trademark, but I, I imagine it's similar, that for a patent, you can always uh, print on your product patent pending. So you have already submitted the application, but you're waiting for this 12 to 8 months. Is that the same with the uh, trademark? So prior to receiving the actual trademark registration, you can use the TM symbol. So it's TM raised at the end of your, your slogan or your word or your logo. And that just kind of puts people on notice. You don't actually have to file the application to use that. You can start using it now, um, but it puts people like on, on the first level of notice. And then once your trademark is, um, uh, once your trademark application is granted, then you start using that circle R, and that is the indicator to people that this has been filed with the trademark office. Uh, and what is the difference when it was filed and received? So because of um, electronics now, the date that is filed, are you talking about when it's received by the by the UP, uh, USPTO or yes, when you yes. get that. All right, it's the same day. Your filing date is the received date because you know it's filed electronically. Okay, but uh, when you're, um, the protection starts when you file it, is that correct? No, the protection starts when you are awarded the trademark. However, <laughs> you do not you do not have all of that protection during the 12 to 18 months, but there are certain circumstances where that is helpful. So for instance, if you are um, selling on Amazon and your, your trademark application is pending, uh, they can help you over there, but that's within the Amazon system. They, they kind of have their own intellectual property system working within itself. Okay, I have another question. I, I believe that it's uh, really important. Um, all the big players, also Amazon, uh, have possibility to uh, report, uh, I believe it's called infringement. So if someone yes. is using uh, someone else's trademark, 
or is not official representative. And uh, this notice can also be used um, as, a, as a way to shut down your shop or uh, take down your product. How important is to have a lawyer that will prove to Amazon that the patent is already pending or that the brand is already being registered? How important is to be also uh, to already have uh, a lawyer that will help uh, explain to Amazon so that uh, the, the time when your product reappears uh, in their search uh, would be shorter? I would say it's pretty important because the Amazon process, like I said, they have their own um, intellectual property process in which they will let you know that somebody has reported infringe infringement. Uh, maybe they research it a lot. Sometimes they don't and they will just shut down your store. And then there is a back and forth with Amazon between their attorneys and your attorney um, trying to prove you know, that you did not infringe upon somebody else's trademark. Okay, so it's very important because probably without attorney, you will not convince Amazon uh, that you have a title to, to the trademark. Correct. Yeah, so what would you suggest to entrepreneurs how to go about, how to think about, that is maybe even more important than how, uh, than, than, than the 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 steps that they need to take, to take. But how should they think about um, trademarks and patents? And um, what, what should they be thinking? How important is that in, in, in any business nowadays? Because as you said, every, um, so anyone can report that you infringe their brand or uh, any, anyone can use that if you're not protected against you. So how important is and uh, even more, how should they think about it? Uh, how should they set their mindset in a relationship to the intellectual property rights? They should think that everything that they create that is original, um, they can file either for a trademark, you know, if it's a word mark, if it's a logo, if it's a design, or if it's something that is written or music or um they have the protection of the copyright office. So you have to think everything that you create, can I register this? Okay. And uh, when should they start reg uh, the registration process? As soon as they feel like this is the, the, the mark, the name or the logo that they're definitely going to go with. You know, most companies will go through, you know, a bunch of names before they they settle down on one. So once you settle down on one, that's when you should contact a, a IP attorney um, to do that search and you need to file it as soon as possible. Okay, I have another question. Uh, someone's uh, trademark get gets infringed. How should they react? What, what, what is the first step they should uh, take? All right. If, if the person owns the trademark and they are infringed upon, first, if they are on digital media. So if they're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, they can submit a form to their offices and say, this is, you know, this is, this person has infringed upon my trademark and you have to be the trademark owner though. No, you have to be the trademark owner. So, you know, if you're just putting your stuff out there on the internet and you're not, you're not filing for registrations for trademarks or copyrights and somebody steals it, you know, that first step, they don't even have to get it taken down, you know, off the internet. The next step would be to, um, to send a cease and desist letter um, yes, you can send it by yourself as a lay person, but it's usually more powerful when it comes, you know, from an attorney and you can enter into negotiations at that time. Um, how much has this person infringed? Are they just getting started or did they infringe so much that they made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of your brand? <laughs> you know, that, that all makes a difference. Um, and like I said, you should get an attorney at this process. So if this does not work out in negotiations, then they can file a lawsuit for trademark or copyright infringement. Okay. 
Thank you very much for this detail. I would just like to comment on one of the topics I, I found very interesting, and it's mostly in UK because it's it's um, a, a, a bit more conservative than US. But one of my mentors had a patent for Windows, and their competitors started using the same patent. It was a patent how to close the window so that it was uh, shut tight and that the temperature, sorry, the, the energy would not go out. And he found out that his competitor uh, used his patent and he went to the lawyer and uh, the lawyer said, we can sue for up to five years um, in the past. So, and he said, okay, but uh, my pending was just being in, in, in infringed. So someone, they started just using it on, on, on one of their products. Mm -hmm. The lawyer said, okay, uh, let's wait. And then they started to use the same patent on three or four other products. And they waited for five years and sue in five years. And because they won, they could take over the company with the... Uh, with, with the money that was owned to them. What, what do you think about that strategy? So unfortunately, I am not in a position uh, to comment on patent law. So in the in the US, um, patent law is within the United States Trademark and Patent Office, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's covered by a, a special patent attorney. Okay, but... Uh, let's say that someone infringe a trademark. Would you recommend your client, especially if it's a big company, that they should continue using it and that they will get more money out because uh, they sold so the, because the the volume uh, was so much higher, or they should uh, sue immediately? So I'm going to give the standard attorney answer. It depends. <laughs> it's really hard to you know. It's really hard to. Um, answer that type of hypothetical. So, you know, let's say the client, if they did, they just started out, um, their investment is low and they know this big company might come for them, then maybe it would be more cost effective to rebrand. However, if they have been established, so let's take, for instance, um, Facebook and Meta. Meta was covered um, by copyrights. So it was the Meta Financial Group, had, excuse me, Meta was covered by trademarks. Um, the Meta Financial Group had trade trademark registrations. And then when Mark Zuckerberg decided that he was going to change the name from trademark to Meta, all of a sudden there's somebody else that already had that trademark and he ended up having to buy it out. Um, so I don't think Meta Financial Group stopped using their trademark <laughs> until that, um, that agreement was made. So it's always case by case and always uh, you need attorney to make uh, educated decision. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, before we finish, I would like you or I would challenge you to um, give away some uh, quick tips or trade secrets that will benefit our listeners in regards to trademark registration and infringement? Uh, let me think about that. So um, quick tips. Number one, always get a trademark comprehensive search. Uh, this is not just you going on Google or you searching, you know, who's it for, for domain names. You want to have an actual search that um, searches the federal, federal trademarks, state trademarks, business offices, social media, um, you, that is the number one thing that you want to do. Uh, number two, let me see, file quickly. <laughs> like I said, as soon as you decide that this is the idea and the brand that you're going to go with, go ahead and file quickly. And number three is to use your mark. You know, if you, if you've done the research, you feel like, um, it, it is, You've done the research, you feel like there's a strong likelihood that your mark will be granted, go ahead and use your mark. Because if you don't use your mark, if somebody else comes along, they will say, well, listen, um, they abandoned their mark. 
<laughs> they abandon their mark. So once you have your mark, you absolutely have to use it. And you do have to come back to the trademark office in, uh, within after five years to prove that you've been using your mark. Thank you very much for all these uh, details. Where would be the best place to search for you if one of our listeners decide to uh, work with you on their trademarks? Sure. Uh, the best way to reach me is at my website, which is cogerlawfirm.com. That is C-O-G-E-R lawfirm.com. I can also be found on LinkedIn under Coger Law, Law Firm, Facebook under Coger Law Firm. And yeah, those are the best ways to reach me. I will include all this in the description below. So it will be easier for all our listeners. And uh, thank you, Karen, for being my guest tonight. Thank you.